Hello and welcome. My name is Nadine and you're watching Spaghetti Junction. I'm doing a little mini series all about going on holiday as a single parent with a child. And this is the fifth video. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about fears that we might have when we travel with our children. I will put all the videos of this little series into a playlist. And if you click on this little icon here, they will all come up and you can watch them afterwards so you don't miss anything. There are two types of fears that we have when it comes to going away with our children on our own, especially if, you, if we haven't done it before. And they're rational fears and they're irrational fears. So I want to talk about both of these fears a little bit separately. So rational fears, I would say, are things that I get them or used to get them and they're totally easily controllable. So for example, my biggest rational fear when um, going away with Betty is to find my way around, especially if it's in a foreign country and I need to find public transport, trains and buses, and I look up some trips that I want to do, and then I need to find my, my way to somewhere. And the way I deal with this fear is just I over plan every detail. I spend hours and hours looking up buses and trains. And I also always message the host when we stay in an Airbnb. I look up what I think might be the right route. Uh, I ask the host of the Airbnb for advice. And what I also always do is if there's a tourist office in the place where we're staying, I'll ask again. And I think that's quite a rational fear to have. Even if you don't travel with a child, nobody wants to get lost. But I think getting lost with a child, you know, your imagination can quickly go a little bit wild on what could happen when you get lost. I mean, I don't take my imagination that far, but I make sure that what I can control, I will try and control. And the same with food. I mean, nowadays we, we're good with food. Betty is nine and she can say what she wants to eat. But I would not go somewhere that's totally remote with no shops around. And if I go somewhere, um, another thing I make sure I look up is that I know where there's the nearest supermarket. Make sure I have a quick look at the restaurants that are in the area. These are all fears that are rational and they're easy to solve. I'm usually still nervous until I get to the place and I've been on public transport and the trains are what they say and they're not going somewhere totally different. But it's not a fear that stops me from going away. And now that I've done it a couple of times, I think next time I go away, um, I'll be fine. But it's the building up the confidence. You start small, you start an hour away from home or two hours away from home, go away for one or two nights and then you slowly build up your confidence. You go further away, you go abroad and then that way you don't have to throw yourself into the cold water of suddenly being somewhere where you don't know anything and you're lost and you're starving and all that. So you just rationalize your rational fears. And then there's the irrational fears that I know people have and that's the fear of, I think the worst fear is having an accident abroad or your child being ill or you being ill abroad. So that, you know, that something happens where you can't look after your child or some sort of catastrophe happening when you're away. And I'm not really professionally qualified to um, help people with their irrational fears but I can only explain to you how I try and deal with these things and avoid avoid having them. Especially if you haven't really traveled with your child before, like you can get all sort of crazy thoughts about traveling. So the way I rationalize irrational thoughts is that I think, think about my daily life, my everyday life when we're at home. How do I manage my everyday life? And I try and do okay. I, I make an effort that we're both happy, that our home is in order, that she goes to school on time, that she's well fed. So I'm quite a responsible and rational parent. So I think to myself, if we're doing okay in our everyday life, why should we not be okay when we're on holiday? And the chance that something totally terrible can happen is so small 
that it can happen anywhere. It doesn't have to happen on holiday. Of course, it's more unfortunate if it happens on holiday, but still think about your everyday life. You do okay in everyday life. Why should something terrible, terrible happen when you're on holiday? It shouldn't, it wouldn't. Don't go somewhere where there's spiders and snakes and volcanoes that will already diminish the chances of something bad happening. Don't go somewhere where there's lots of crime. Don't stay in a ghetto. If you have a fear of big cities, go to a big city near you and you will see that it's all right. I mean, I've, I lived in London for a long time, so I don't have the fear of cities. But I can totally understand if you're not used to a big city, you think, and you read these things in the papers, the stabbings and the shootings. No, you'll be fine. Don't drive yourself crazy. And another thing is you read up on places, and especially bigger cities, they will not write about how beautiful the cities are or the places are. They will write about the bad things that are happening. If you're someone who in everyday life has quite a lot of anxiety and is anxious and you don't like going out too far or mixing with people too much, then I would probably advise you to get some professional help or start really small and ease yourself in. I mean, if you're watching this video or any of my other videos, I'm guessing you're watching it because you want to travel and you want to have nice experiences. You wouldn't watch this video if you're absolutely sure and determined that you will never go anywhere because you're too scared. There's always ways to overcome your fears. Sometimes people need a little bit more help. Sometimes you can do it yourself in your head. That's what I try to do. I've been pretty much okay with Betty almost for a decade. So why should something terrible happen on holiday? Just to secure yourself. Make sure you know the emergency number in the place where you're going. Make sure you know where the hospital is. Make sure you know how to call a taxi if you need to. Um, I've never really done that, to be honest. If I think about it, I think, yeah, I should do that. But um, I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to be a little bit too hard to be positive. One thing we do is that um, when we stay somewhere, I put the address of our accommodation abroad on a piece of paper and I put it in Betty's rucksack and she always carries a little rucksack for her drink and her snack. So that's in there. So in case she gets lost somewhere, somebody will find her and have a look through her stuff and she knows that the address is in the rucksack. She can tell people. She also knows my telephone number by heart. With smaller kids, either also write it on a piece of paper or on the arm. Betty never liked having anything written on her arm, but now she knows my number by heart. I also say to her, if we get lost, go into shop and ask for help rather than stranger in the street. Although I think 99.9% .9 of strangers in the street will be nice and help because imagine you see a lost child in the street. What would you do? You would probably be nice and help. That's how I try and see the world. It's just if they go into a shop and ask for help there, they're in a place and you can then easier find the shop rather than having an adult walking around with your child and you miss each other. I think I'm overthinking this already, but I do make up little scenarios like that. I just don't make up disaster scenarios of death and earthquakes and these sort of things. But obviously it's important that you, you're safe when you go away. I would never go away somewhere too remote or too oriental or nothing dangerous. Um, so far we've only been to places where the culture is pretty similar to ours. It's mainly because of the food, because Betty likes to eat children's food and I don't want to go somewhere too far where I miss out on the opportunity to try amazing new things until she is ready to join me. For example, if you're European and you go to another European country, the cultures are not too different. The food is a little bit different, the language is different, the way the streets and houses look are different, but it's not different in that you'll be seriously shocked and your child won't be shocked. The same, I guess, if you're in America, anywhere in Northern America, um, you know, you can stay in your own country, but have a huge diversity of how things look and what you can do. 
I think that's me done for the video. So make sure your fears are rational fears. And if they are, then you can solve them. And quite often it's just a little bit of brain work and reading up on your problems that you're making up for yourself and planning. And then you'll be totally fine. And the irrational fears like throw them away. Don't just don't do it. Don't start. I hope you enjoyed this video. My channel is still quite new. I'm trying to grow it. So I'd really appreciate if you subscribe and you press the like button. And maybe you want to put in the comment section what you think about my video and have some thoughts for more videos. And uh, hopefully I see you again. Bye.